you are taking uh, is a it's a very broad one and we will concise it yes. so the content we will cover today is the what is parallel data structures what are the existing one and then what we have done we have focused on mainly parallel hierarchical data structures and hierarchical data structure includes the tree type structure in which also there are various kind of data structure existing like b b plus t r r star t and uh, he binary search tree and all are existing so our main focus was on the three two three tree and red black tree why we have chose, chosen this because there are uh, we have proposed some efficient algorithms that are not existing yet and the problem too we have built is the quadri representation on pyramid machine quadri is also a kind of data structure which is used for two dimensional images and uh, we have constructed an algorithm which give a quadri construction on pyramid models and the future work conclusion and references next uh, as we all know data structure is a way of storing data on a computer so that it can use it can be used efficiently efficiently means we can perform the dictionary operation like insert delete and update on that machine efficiently and the example well known examples are stack queue linked list array hash table and all and uh, parallel data structure is the implementation of this data structures on more than one processor so that the number of processor can concurrently perform insert delete update operation on this and uh, the existing data structures are array stack queue hash table linked list trees and all and uh, in trees binary search tree heap bb plus t two three tree red black tree they are the uh, existing one but for two three tree and red black tree they are we proposed a new algorithm for it and uh, for heap we have given a uh, efficient algorithm better than the existing one so next so from now on now describe the now, what is in the report you must mention the proper reference and other things right yeah, that you in fact in a slide also we have now describe the first data structure is the parallel heap parallel heap is the implementation of the parallel priority queues the basic idea behind the parallelization of the heap is that each node each consist r key instead of the one key let's try to define the parallel heap Parallel heap is a complete binary tree such that each node can contain R items, and all R, R items at node have value less than or equal to value of the item its children. This is an example of the parallel heap. In each node, they consist of the R key instead of the one key. Let's try to define the dictionary of operation on parallel heaps. Let's first consider the insertion of the R keys. First, sort sort the R key, and the sorted R key is the merge with root node. It becomes the sorted list of the two R items. Smallest R item, the smallest R item is the put in the root node, and remaining R item is the carry forward to next, carry forward to child for next iteration. one point is that how to find out the child for next iteration it may be left child or right child let consider n n is the indexing of the target code and i is the level of the current nodes so we check the i the right most bit if it is a zero then move left child if it is a one then move right child and that child become the current node for next iteration this is this iteration is the uh, repeated until the r keys reach the target code no, i want to understand again you speak again clearly what is initially given initially we have to insert k keys in a existing heap k existing number of keys parallel processor or and heap uh, what is the definition of it is it a same binary so, uh, it's a uh, in parallel heap we are in, uh, keeping r number of keys on a particular node so it's go drop it see if uh, this is a heap this is having a but to a r this are having also r keys and this is also having r keys so we are uh, inserting is it r exactly r or it can uh, be no that. for uh, internal nodes it's exactly r the last node yes. can contain a less than eight more sir eight more now now you want to insert 
how many kiss K kiss? K kiss, uh, K can be K can be up to R. Now so this K element we have sorted. First we sort, yes. Hmm. That's the key. Okay, next slide. Next slide. Next. Ah, so you have sorted K element. Yeah. Yes. Current node is the root node. What right. is current node is the root node? Is the so pointer is here. Yes. Now and repeat until the target node is here. Yes, yes, because the last node will be our target node. In heap, the last uh, one will be the merge. No, First merge the K the item node. with R item with the root. Carry the insert process. With the R item to the current node, produce the result of the single solid list of R plus R plus K, K items. Okay, all, all this K you are yes, inserting. Yes, this, this is the 13 yeah. K. So you have inserted this. Yes. Okay. Then we uh, so sorted. It place the smallest R item K. in the current node. node. And remaining R item is the carry forward to the child for next iteration. That is of the right, right child. No, not exactly. No, it depend on the target index of the target first, node. The smallest you are keeping. Yes, first we are finding the target node, where the inserted node will go. And the target node index we stored somewhere. Suppose... Oh, no, no, you read this. Then you tell me. Merge the K items carried to by the insert process yeah, with R items. So you have inserted this K R elements R with A1, A2, A1. Yeah. So you have got A1 yeah. to A R plus K. Yes. Right? Place the smallest R items in the current node. Current node means what? The root node. Yeah. So smallest element in the root node. Yeah. Right? And remaining? Agreed. Yeah. Now carry forward the remaining K items to the child. child of the next iteration insert process down the child lying on the insertion path. It's the hard English man of the of on the insertion path so, leading to the target. So which means where that particular The largest K elements, largest K element is carry forward to child. Which child? Which child? Now if we found the target code initially, if initially target code is uh, what is target code? Target code is like in heap, where the element will go. The element will go at the last uh, available position. Hmm. So we find this, we can easily find out this position. And if it is, uh, we find out the binary representation of this. No, but how are you getting that target code? zero, one, we just index. check the index of the target code. And if it is zero, we move. All the exist number of the nodes. Add the one. What is zero? Zero is the, uh, like the target code of this. Uh, you are indexing of uh, this number, target node. How so are you going to get this target node? That is important. In heap, we know how many nodes are there. And the next one will give, go to the last node or the next to the last node. In heap, huh. one, two, three, like this, so, indexing, huh, huh, like this. Huh. So, so, so we have the index see, of last. Simple, simple sequential processes that we put at the last node, right? Mm -hmm. And then you go up. And adjust the thing. What is the heap insertion technique? So now we are inserting K keys simultaneously. No, no. Let, let, let us first understand in sequential algorithm that insertion is done at the. See, I insert at the bottom. Right? Then we go up. Agreed? That is the same process. Now instead of doing that, you are starting from the top. Now once you have inserted a K, now. Larger R plus K elements will be bringing down, right? Yes. How are you bringing down this? See, first we are inserting, for particular node, we are inserting the current node and the, the keys that are getting from the upper layer. Ah. And we are merging them. Ah. Keeping smallest one in the current uh, node and, and the uh, new one into the next child. Ah. Next child means how are you going to define so, it? Sir, this <laughs> through this what, indexing. How are you getting that in there? If it is we know the target code is will be here only. Oh, yes, chai, chai, chai. You, that is the thing that where it should be placed that one. Okay. Right. So okay. if it is zero, if yeah. we check if we are in the level first. Okay, okay, first. I understood. Now I understood. So now there will be R plus K element. So yes. we can simply find if any total number of this R plus K? Again, yes, for this node again it will get the same. Again you mark. Yes, R plus K we are sorting and Sir, n is a total number of k and each node is a consists of the r k. Then total number of node is the n upon r. So the next target node is the n upon r plus one. Ah, what is it? 
Now you got the target node. Now our K elements you will be bringing and, to yes, this end. And this side becomes the current node and this uh, uh, step 3 is the repeated until and the... Job, then you will be merging again K elements. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah. And some of the elements... Then again we place the smallest one into that current node and uh, the largest part is forward to the next one. Okay, that means you are using it. Okay, I understood. We use the R upon log R processor to sort the K key and merge the K plus R items. Then, time required by the sorting is order of log square R using R upon log R processor. And step three, step three point one take the time order of log r, and step three is the repeated order of n upon r plus one, height of the heap. Then total time <coughs> required by this algo is the order of log r into log n, and we use the processor r upon log r processors. Then total cost will become order of r log r. Log n. It is a cost optimal. Why? In sequential case, if you, if you, we want to insert our items, each item take the order log, log n, n times so and total. R items take r log n times. And here also we are using r log r processor. It's giving time log r log n. So its uh, cost will be r log n. So and its speed up is the r upon log r, which is a hundred percent. And try to define next uh, dictionary of present deletion. Suppose we want to delete our highest priority items. We know highest priority item is exist in the roots. So delete the R item from the roots and put the R item from the last node into the roots. And root, uh, root is the mark current nodes. Merge the, merge the R items with the two R items of its children. It becomes the sorted list of the three R items. And the smallest R item is the put in the current nodes. Let's define X and Y. X is the value of the largest item of the left child and Y is the, uh, y is the value of the largest item in right child. If X is X greater than or equal to Y, then put the next smallest R item into left child and remaining R item put in the right child and right child become the current nodes. Otherwise, then put the next smallest R item in the right child and remaining R item put in the left child and left child become the current nodes. Just, just to epify the uh, only. Okay. So, hey, until the spelling here. Uh, to give more pressure on <laughs> <laughs> And step 3 is uh, repeated until the if property is satisfied at current node or current node becomes no, nodes. Clear. Once insertion is clear, So we use the R upon log R processor to merge the items. But what, is the, what is the difference between your method and their method? There exists parallel heap, right? Oh, yeah. What is the difference? So we are using R heap by log processor. They are using only R processor mm -hmm. and taking their uh, using R processor and their time complexity is somewhat uh, different. I have to find out. Okay. You mention all this there. Yeah? Yeah, I have to check. Cholo. Uh, no way. Cholo. Next. So next data structure is parallel red plate tree and uh, what? is red black tree. Uh, red black tree is a binary solution to satisfy the following property in which uh, every node is colored as red or black and the root is always colored as black and every leaf will be colored as black and if a node is red then both its children are black. It means from root to a particular leaf no consecutive nodes can have a red node and every simple path from a node to a descendant leaf contains the same number of red nodes. It means for every node uh, every path from that node to leaf will contain exactly the same number of black nodes. These are the five properties. This example of a red big tree where all the leaves are containing black uh, colored, root is black and you can see uh, no 
no path is containing two consecutive red nodes and every path uh, <coughs> means from that if we consider this so it containing black uh, node and this path is also containing black node same number oh, of black same number of black nodes so the insertion operation what we do in sequential insertion for if we want to insert k key in the existing red node tree we uh, do this in the two phase search phase and rebalancing phase in search phase for that particular key we find out the position of that key and we insert that key as a new red node and then try to rebalance this uh, new red node by recovering and rotation of red plate so this is a typical sequential insertion and uh, what if i want to insert a k number of keys concurrently to that red plate key uh, next so in that case in search phase we just for k keys we find out the position of those k keys and insert as a sub packet of the keys in the leaf of that particular node so this kind of uh, structure will form and uh, uh, each and every leaf not not each and every leaf the leaf contain some leaf contains the sub packet of uh, the keys now we'll create some waves we first for each and every packet we find the median of that particular uh, Uh, packet that median divide packet to two left uh, two sub packet left sub packet and right sub packet the new median element next the new median element will become a new red node for that and uh, the left and right sub packet will create that right child uh, so the both the child now the new red uh, for the new red node will check if its parent is black then insertion is over no need to rebalance it but if it is red then uh, that processor will be active for this iteration so all the processor at this stage all the active processor at this stage form a new wave and this waves will go up in the uh, until it reach the root and at the same time new uh, the packet is uh, the median is means we are finding the medians and the median is splitting the roots so the waves are keep creating only only that sub tree part will be affected right only sub tree part that sub tree because yes. you see once you are doing this side this side is affected not affected at all uh which sub tree means all the active processor at this level are affected yeah. now next level next so the new new wave will create getting created and, and the but this side is not required right? suppose you know the parent of this node parent of just one of them This fourth one. Yes. No, no. This is our, our, our. Ah, this one. Yes. The parent is say red also. Yes. No, this parent. This parent is red. This is red. So this processor will be active. Active. And uh, at this layer, the all the processor so which are active. All the processor be will be active. No, means it depends. It can be active or not. Means only, all processor only, taking only, this condition. Only only affected will be. Will go up. Move up of that sub tree, right? No, this sub tree will not be affected. No. No, miss. This all are so doing parallelly. So all the all the active processor become a wave. What do you mean by active processor? Active processor means if the parents of the this node is red. Is red. Parent is red. Then active. Otherwise, inactive. It, it won't do anything. Now, if it is active red, then only that sub tree will be affected. Yes. Yes. See, neighboring processor. If you find no, it won't affect. So the waves are getting created from the leaf, and the waves that are already created are moving up. Oh, there so, may be several such waves. Such waves. And as the last wave get created and it will reach uh, reach the root, then it means the our red black tree is balanced. Very balanced. So. for uh, this creation of wave and moving up of always we are using some local rule of insertion in for that we have defined a area of a particular node the area of a particular node is defined by its uh, like this is the area defined by uh, a processor d it includes its parent and its son and its grandparent and its son so the area defined by d is the all seven nodes so here also we have considered two cases if in that particular area only one processor is active in so we can do this by sequentially and if there are two processor active in this area so this is this we have considered as a parallel case so there are uh, different some ro local roads 
there are different rules for insertion for sequential case and parallel case for sequential case this is a sequential case here only this this was a tree and d is inserted here so uh, it checks the both the tree were red means this is red and this is black so it just uh, colored both as black recoloring will do all these things here d has inserted and d has inserted a left child of b so the one rotation the one uh, right rotation will require b will go here and uh, the recoloring will do so this is standard sequential algorithm yes yeah, sir these are rules for uh, rotation and recoloring okay this is also here double but rotation and recoloring in parallel case if there are d and e are two Processor that want to uh, that are active, so and its parent is red. One parent is red and one parent is black. In that case, first we will uh, rotate. What we are doing? Right. We will uh, we are ro going a ro right rotation as B on B. So B will become a root node here, and uh, E will uh, attach uh, as a left child of A and uh, D as here. So we are one rotation and recoloring are required. Yeah. And uh, the other case, if both the parents are red, in that yeah. case no rotation is required. Only recoloring will do. We colored both there as a black node and nothing will require. So here also this is the total flow diagram of uh, insertion. We are inserting as a packets the K keys. Then splitting as the median of this and the moving uh, that all the active processor at this layer will form a wave and this wave are moving up and the next waves are uh, keep creating at the same time so all the waves will move up and then all the waves reach here means our tree get balanced. So time required in search phase is log n plus log r. R is we have to insert uh, number of number of keys and uh, so. This set of new links created by the middle key constitute a new wave. So at most O of log r wave, log r waves can be created, and uh, waves are moving up level by level. So it will equal to the height of that red brick tree. It's log n. So total uh, time and waves are creating in pipeline. So log n plus log r, and uh, the speed up is r log n by log n plus log r. So it's O of r. The bound of. Uh, so deletion. The idea behind the deletion is we are checking each and every. We, uh, we are checking each and every node which node which keys we can delete parallelly. So we will check that particular node is a leak node or not. If uh, that node is a leak node, we can directly delete it. And if it is not a leak node, then and it's having only one child. So we will check that child also want to delete some item or not. If it is not, then also we that uh, processor can run concurrently. And if it is, uh, if node has having two child and both of your children don't want to delete any item from that uh, particular node, so that uh, node is also can be processed as a concurrently. So in these three cases, we find the uh, we make that processor active, and uh, in that particular uh, iteration, we. For all the processes which are active, we delete that node and rebalance the tree. So we will repeat this whole iteration until all keys are deleted. This is a proposed by me. So more, more, more. They are just two together. Yes, okay. So this is the analysis of it. O of log n time to first no, but part. But you give the diagram also, as you did in the case of insertion. Then only it will be all the cases properly studied. Deletion, sir. Actually, there is no diagram required. It means we are just taking that node is leak <laughs> node or not, and uh, no, it's required because I have to understand there are four, mm -hmm. five cases, three, four cases. Three, yeah, three cases. So that you have to study properly. Take okay, a next. So total time required for deletion is c log n log n. That c is a constant time. And cost of this is O of R log n because we are using R processor to delete R keys. So it, the speed up is here is order of R. 
next that is the structure is the 2,3 tree. 2,3 tree is the a special kind of the B plus tree such that every every internal node has two or three sons. Idea behind the parallelization of the two three is similar to red black tree. In in insertion of the K key in two three tree is consists of the two two phase search phase and uh, rebalancing phase. In search phase, every every key is search it, its position in the tree and end of the search phase packets of the key hang from the leads. Only difference in the red black tree and 2-3 tree, tree is that in 2-3 tree, tree all the leaves in, in same level. Then wave created by the middle key is the plain wave. Oh, only? Only Say, Sir, but the all the uh, leaf tree is a balanced tree while the red black tree was not a balanced tree. So here in that case the leaves were like uh, the in same level. Not at the same level. See, uh, two three tree. Mm. It's is a the balanced tree. Uh, not only the B plus balance, tree. Huh? What is the full definition of two three tree? It is a B plus tree. It means every uh, internal load has a pointer on the leaf. What is the number of? It is a K or a K, right? Uh, yes. It is a K-R-A-K. Red black is not a K-R-A-K. Yes. It is a binary key. It's binary key. So that is the first term. Then all then modes are in same level. Same level, it is not the case of. And wave created by the middle key is EJ plane wave. So in each packet, middle, middle key is split packet in the two sub packets. And the set of and middle key become the new leaf nodes and set of the new leaf node create, created by the middle key constitute new wave and this wave will send up in each iteration until it is a disappear. So here the difference is only all the waves are in uh, moving level by level means they are at the same level and in the red black tree there was not this case. This can be seen later like on. I have one okay, go ahead. Let's consider one example. Suppose there is a 2-3 tree, tree which consists of the 3 key, 8, 11 and 15. This is tree is the given, 2-3 tree, tree. And we want to insult the 12 item. 12 item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 12, 13 and 14. And in search page, each key is search its position. And after the search page, the packets of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is attached angs to with 8 and this package hang with 11 and this package hang with 15. And so you have taken in such a way the numbers that 8 comes out of these and it is like that. How, are you, how did you take this number? What is uh, You have the, so, suppose we have inserted this into the tree with the array 1, 2, 3, 4, Right? What is the original bit tree? This one. 8, 11, 15. No, no, no. That is, you want to insert. No, no. Nee, nee, this, this is a... This oh, achha, want you want to insert this? Yeah, this is a tail icon. Now, after that, what do you did? After the search page? Mm, this, all the elements. That means you have to have this element sorted. Yes. One to four. We want to insert this. We find out we, the packets of this key achha, achha. and hang this that particular uh, packet to the ah, diga, particular diga. leaf. Diga. Now diga. we are finding the median element of each and every packet and, and dividing this packet in two sub packets. And then this the new el median element will become a new red node. Right. Uh -huh. will become a new red node and then uh, the and packet and wave each go up by one level and this node become the our node because every internal node have the maximum three child then this node is the further split nine become the parent node and there become the two internal node four eight and eleven thirteen in this case and wave is the go in the uh, root nodes at same time, next wave is the created by the middle middle key. The middle key is the 2, 6 and there is a 10, 12 and 14. These middle key become the new leaf nodes and which is attached in the parents nodes. 
and this node and this node also become the our node and this is the part the uh, is splitting and this node is, is splitting in this and four big four is a go up in parents nodes and same kind of this and wave is the more move in the up in parents nodes and at same time new wave is the created there is a only singles single scale so one three five and seven become the new leaf node and it is attached with parents nodes and become this this internal node and this internal node become the our load and this is the further split and two become the parents node and there is a sub sub child nodes one and three and same kind of thing is there the six become up go in parents node and five and seven eight become child nodes and this node is the uh, yes satisfy the properties this two you are not going to touch, right? Yes. Uh. Only one node, uh. node uh, loading nodes will split up and then again the rebalance is go up to the root. And wave is go uh, in roots and it is disappear. So that was the uh, 233. Now the next problem. So a little faster. Uh, sir, this is the second one. So quadri representation on pyramid model. Quadri is a different kind of data structures used for a two dimensional images. And uh, uh, pyramid model. Next. And it is based on principle of recursive decomposition. And uh, it mainly the quadri mainly used in the image part partitioning, uh, image processing problems and uh, the pattern recognition problems. And uh, in that, uh, uh, this is a typical example of a quadri where we have our, at the root we have a uh, original images. That image is subdivided into four sub images and these four sub images again subdivided into the 16 sub images. So at the base layer we are having a images which is containing only one pixel. So the full image is partitioning into per, uh, the number of pixels. So we have taken a square binary images, binary image means which can have only value 0 or 1 and uh, uh, the process is represented by a uh, tree of out degree 4 and where the root node represent the full images. <laughs> so we have taken three kind of nodes here. Black represent the object of image, and white represent the background of image, and gray represent the nodes where the further processing will require. Mixture of this. Mixture of this. Next. So we have taken some com, uh, coding for this, and uh, the, uh, means at the base layer, every node contain either zero or one. So we have taken the ending and oring of this, uh, the combination of pixels and uh, at upper layer uh, the base layer will contain the uh, uh, will calculate and and or operation and concatenate both the operation and will send this code to the upper layer. So upper layer will uh, will have the two bit code. So uh, the upper layer will and and or this two bit code. So it will uh, uh, first and the uh, the first bit and operation will perform and the second bit or operation will perform. So this is the result of this two bit uh, ending and oring. The algorithm is, uh, we are each and every processor we are having three variables. First variable is storing the value of and operation, second variable is storing or value of or operation and third variable is storing the concatenation of and and or. So after initializing each processor send its value to the father and at the same time we perform and operation and or operation. And uh, the whatever the result of and and or operation, it will uh, concatenate both the operation and place this operation in variable 3. And then send this variable, uh, this value of this variable to the upper layer. So this uh, step, uh, these two steps will get repeated until every layer, until top layer get processed. So the result of quadri representation will be in the variable 3 of each processor. So this is uh, the quadri construction. In the pyramid model, we have a, a, a extra variable which is having the quadri representation of this model, uh, this particular image. So analysis of this, uh, we are performing three operation and operation or operation and the vertical communication between layers. So 
the time required for uh, uh, this operation is the uh, summation of and operation or operation plus this vertical uh, communication between the layers into the number of layers uh, required in the pyramid model. So this is the conclusion. We studied the <coughs> different kind of parallel structures. Next. This is the future work. There are much more things to explore here. See, I have few comments. One is that what you have done, uh, you you are writing a, a red black tree, and then you are making two three tree and so on, right? And, and in both the case that you are trying to do through wave generation and everything, agree? <coughs> now, can you uh, write different way? That you discuss about the wave generation first, then as an example, that use of your wave uh, concept on red black tree and two three tree. No, Not clear? The wave is, you define wave is your paradigm. Yeah. Okay. Now, use this paradigm to solve the problem on red black tree and also to three tree. Is it clear? See, your paradigm is that. The wave was getting okay. and going. So <laughs> that you disclose, discuss first. Right? And now <coughs> use this wave thing for your red black tree and to three tree. We are already using red black tree. Ulta garden, I mean red black tree wave. Then you are writing similarly, you are using on. similar in So instead of doing it, you discuss what is wave and other things. So that we can apply to other radical uh, So it will look like the generic thing is first you discuss and then for as an example you are considering two, three, then it give, gives more weightage on your right hand. But, uh, in that case also means this maybe our presentation was different but the uh, so, <laughs> no, I am telling you while you are writing the report, you write that way. The another one is that, but you have already mentioned in the, that means you have not done uh, anything on off tree. Off trees are okay. And once you are telling that what tree you are representing, you should tell little about the operation on what tree. <laughs> See, I represented something, it doesn't mean anything until, unless I cannot perform the operation on, say, in data structure at least you should tell how to insert, how to delete, right? These are the minimum operations you have to tell. Otherwise, the data structure is, doesn't have any meaning. Sir, because quadri construction can be used in other image. So, image, image operation. Yes, image process. You take one operation, uh, one operation, say, in image, say, Whichever is simple operation, say histogram or something, some operation, and you tell the how you <coughs> some the image processing also has some basic operation, right? So one take one operation and you see that this, in that way you can follow. So that is a group. That is a otherwise double second other way any meaning. Actually, quadri can directly use. Then you can think about it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Uh, we are here to discuss some parallel algorithms on the computational geometry is very uh, classical and popular uh, problem. That's Warner diagrams. Myself, Rishabh, and my uh, my friend uh, Tarun will present on this topic. First of all, see what we have in a bunch of slides. First of all, we'll explain what is the Voronoi diagram, uh, its properties, some of the definitions. And uh, like we'll discuss some of the properties that will form the basis of our own algorithm. Then we'll discuss the sequ uh, best sequential algorithm present in the uh, for making the Voronoi diagrams. Then the existing best parallel algorithm available. Then I'll discuss our approach and how that approach can help in various other applications, various other problems of the computational geometry. Then, uh, uh, as obvious, I'll discuss the complexity and then with the conclusion, I'll conclude my slides. Like uh, we'll start like. What is the Voronoi diagram? Basically, Voronoi diagram is this diagram. So basically, what happens if we have a Euclidean plane and with a bunch of points in that? So we have to partition the whole plane by assigning every point in the plane to the nearest side in PI, which means that like the point here will be closest to this side, not to any other side. So partition the whole plane according to that. To visualize this in a better scenario, like uh, we can consider like moving on a road. And we have a bunch of noise uh, noise points along the road. Like, if we have to see which noise point we'll be hearing to, 
while walking that will that that gives a representation as if we make a straight line from here and in which region we lie we can visualize okay i'll hear to this noise source i'll hear to this noise source here that kind of visualization one can have from the voronoi diagrams so uh, coming to the definitions uh, first of all what is a voronoi cell voronoi cell is basically this kind of region and uh, like every location within it it is closer to the side above which that cell is drawn than it's to any other side then we have the voronoi lines basically the line connecting the two uh, two voronoi cells is the is a voronoi line and the voronoi points voronoi points are the voronoi vertex it can be any other thing voronoi vertex is basically the uh, the point joining more than 3 voronoi cells now moving to the some properties like first of all is a quite condensed property a point q is a voronoi vertex if and only if the largest empty circle containing at least 3 side which means is like basically which it means like if we have the largest uh, the voronoi vertex contains if we form a largest circle with a center as the voronoi vertex then it will contain at least 3 sides and the second point was like it doesn't contain any other side in between that one more a good conclusion is that we form a voronoi vertex generally like we get a point in the intersection of two lines but in the case of voronoi vertex we get the intersection by the intersection of three or more than three lines that's the conclusion from this point basically and basically to give a this uh, this will be very much obvious when we'll show our own uh, algorithm and the conceptualize uh, then we uh, then everybody can visualize that pretty easily then like uh, we have one more property like the number of edges are at, uh, in the voronoi diagram can be at most 3 and minus 6 where n is the number of sides and the number of vertices can be at most 2 and minus 5 from where we got this formula basically uh, we'll use the euler's formula in the for the computational geometry which gives which is basically used for the uh, closed figures so to make this voronoi diagram a closed figure like to, to have a closed face we assume we have a point at infinity so all these these lines which were like which were not intersecting uh, which were not like having any point to connect they will we assume that they at infinity they connect to this point so now we can use this uh, euler's formula like this is the number of vertices so now the number of vertices would be initially it was in the voronoi diagram we were assuming it's it to be v now with this point it is v plus 1 minus the number of uh, edges which is e and the number of faces the faces will be like with each face we have one voronoi side so the number of faces would be n so one equation will come from here the second equation will come from the fact that like each each uh, each edge has a degree of 2 like it has two end points so it has a degree 2 and each vertex can have a degree at least 3 like it connects to three uh, voronoi edges so that inequality will lead to this these two inequalities solving that inequality and this one we'll get this two then coming to the best uh, uh, best possible uh, sequential algorithm so basically what was the so basically what was the fortune's algorithm basically it, it it has a concept of a sweep line what it tells before the sweep line we'll try to make the uh, voronoi diagram and after that like uh, uh, like on this side of the voronoi li line we don't have a voronoi diagram on this line of the sweep line we have the voronoi diagram but there was a conceptual error in that what was the error basically if we form a complete voronoi diagram here then any side coming in this side will definitely affect the voronoi diagram on this side so actually we can't have a complete voronoi diagram nearer to this side so what fortune did he made he he didn't make these as a straight lines he made them as a uh, parabolic parabolic curves why the concept of parabola curve basically parabola is a locus of the point which is equidistant from this side and this whole line so conceptually what happened like if a side comes at this point so that will be equidistant so in that case this line would be equidistant from that point as well as this point so making the voronoi diagram like in that case we can have like on expansion this will definitely form a voronoi line that was the basic concept and so uh, and this parabola will definitely like as the sweep line moves on this will this parabola is, uh, will also move on like as seen it yeah like 
and this basically this out outer thing this this we have formed the as we like keep on expanding this forms a Voronoi line, and this is this outside is the beached line. Yeah, it is. It is basically this is the final Voronoi line. This is this is not the beach line. Yes, beach line is the just the outside one. The this is in the phase of expansion. So ultimately, <laughs> when it expands, so this is the final line. This is in the phase of expansion. At expansion, it will also become blue and the Voronoi line. Basically, we didn't add the theory so that like people will understand this. This is the parabola that just forms. Basically, in the fortunes algorithm, what what it was doing? It was basically sorting all these points. Uh, on the basis of x axis, so that was taking n log n time, and basic and afterwards with the each sweep line they were adding these these all uh, sides in the in the event stack. So since these number of uh, these are n, I was discussing the complexity of the fortunes algorithm. What will happen? First of all, it sorts all the point n sides according to the x axis, which takes n log n time, and afterwards it puts each side according to uh, like the event that will happen. In the he, uh, event heap, so since we have n sites, that will take approximate uh, of the order of n. So the total algorithm will take n log n. So the best, so the uh, complexity of the fortune algorithm was n log n, best sequential algorithm. Now we come to the optimal parallel random algorithm, which is discussed by Tarun. Uh, in the next few slides, we will be talking about the best known uh, parallel algorithm for solving Voronoi diagram. Now it was given by Raj Shekhan and uh, Sunita Ramaswamy. Now the algorithm. Time complexity of this algorithm is log n, and the order of processes that are used in this algorithm is of order n. So the cost of this uh, algorithm it is n log n. Now the previously best known uh, parallel algorithm, deterministic parallel algorithm, for this uh, was given by Lee and Chen, and the complexity of that algorithm was log square n. So in this algorithm they obtained a speed up of log n over the previous best known algorithm. But uh, this is a randomized algorithm. Now the basic idea involved in this algorithm is that they use the technique of sampling to divide the main problem into smaller sub-problems and uh, solve these smaller sub-problems in parallel and uh, then obtain the final result using merging all these smaller sub-problems to obtain the final results. Uh, this is the brief outline of this algorithm and uh, I will be explaining to you right now. Now the Initially, we are given the uh, n sites, which is the set S, the S1, S2, S3, and so on, to Sn. Now, from this site set, we select a small random sample R. Now, which is they say that uh, the small random sample R, it is of size n raised to power epsilon, where epsilon it is less than one and greater than zero, some factor, which uh, they pre-process uh, means during the pre-processing, they choose this epsilon such that uh, the output of this algorithm, uh, the probability of correct output is very high. So a little bit of pre-processing is involved in uh, selecting this random sample and uh, choosing this epsilon uh, for getting the efficient output. Now after getting this random sample R, what they do is that they create the uh, Voronoi diagram for this uh, random sample R and uh, use this Voronoi of R to divide the original problem into smaller sub-problems which will be solved in parallel. Now, after getting this Voronoi of R, what they do is that uh, now we need to get the small, small, uh, smaller problems, sub problems. So they use some efficient uh, random searching techniques to get these smaller sub problems. And after getting these smaller sub problems, they need to associate the points that are the input points with each, each of these smaller sub problems. So after processing V of R to associate these points, smaller points. With these, each of these smaller sub problems, uh, the in the next step, what they do is that they recursively compute the Voronoi diagram for each of these smaller sub problems and finally obtain the 
uh, final Voronoi diagram uh, by merging the recursively computed Voronoi diagrams. Now the time complexity involved with each of these steps is of order log n. So the final equation that we get is something like this, that uh, t of n it is equal to t of n raised to our 1 minus epsilon, which, are, which is the order of the uh, <laughs> sub-problem that we get, plus so the speed of the final time complexity that we get is of order, order log n. And the, the best known deterministic algorithm for this problem uh, previously was given by uh, Senegi, and uh, it had a time complexity of order log square n. So this algorithm, randomized algorithm, it obtained a speed up of log n using the same number of processes of order n. Uh, so the speed up of log n, uh, order log n. You should not compare randomized algorithm with deterministic algorithm. Yes, of course, you cannot compare it. But uh, okay. you tell the speed up with this. So uh, after this step, uh, we will be giving our own algorithm. So now it's the time for our own algorithm. So it's a soap bubble algorithm. So basically, I was searching on the blog and read, uh, saw the soap, uh, soap bubble paintings. So that gave me an idea why don't we have the soap bubble as a, uh, why can't we conceptualize soap bubble as our own Voronoi science. So basically what happens, soap bubble has a very good property of expansion and when it, like when the two soap bubbles meet, so uh, each pushes each other and it forms a kind of like equidistant, it uh, expands at the equidistant level. So that kind of uh, visualization can be compared with the Voronoi line. So what happens, we assume the soap bubble as each Voronoi side, periodically pump each bubble equally so that each expands in an equal fashion and expansion of the bubbles will touch each other and form a Voronoi line, I miss the Voronoi, Voronoi line in the two dimensions. This can be conceptualized here, like if you took, take a like, mirror and this will be a line. When we have uh, more than three lines, uh, when the three, more than three lines meet, they will form a Voronoi vertex. So this was the property that I was uh, referring to. What will happen like, when the two bubbles will expand, they will keep on, like this line will, uh, this line will keep on expanding. We have a third bubble, that will stop it from expanding in that direction. So, uh, to get a view, like that third bubble will touch this one and this one. So it will have uh, one line here, one line here. And uh, the expansion will stop only when all of three, uh, all these three meet and that will form a Voronoi vertex. And when this form, this forms with the more than three circles, it's uh, like uh, that, uh, then we have more than, uh, uh, more than three bubbles. Like, basically the concept, uh, uh, this concept is not only uh, used, uh, can, be used uh, can be used in the Voronoi diagrams, but we have conceptualized more problems which solve this thing. First, first one is a little bit obvious, which is the three, uh, we can have the Voronoi diagram for the three dimensions. But, uh, basically, we replace the circles with the uh, bubbles and lines with the uh, we, uh, lines with the replace the lines with the planes. Two planes meet. I mean, the three circles meet. They form Voronoi line. When the more than three circles, four circles meet, they, they might form a Voronoi vertex. And now uh, comes the more important part. Actually, Voronoi diagrams are used where the space need to be partitioned into spheres of influence. Each side is associated with the sphere of influence. At what uh, like? at what distance we can hear its influence. So, what if, if one side is more popular than the other? Basically, the idea came from the fact that like, while moving on the road, if like, I, I watched one side that was making noise, but I was not able to hear that noise. But basically, I was hearing some other noise, which was made by some distant source. Which was more so, powerful as Which was more powerful, yeah. The conclusion is that was more powerful. So, that kind of thing is not uh, covered by the Voronoi diagram, since it uh, captures all the Voronoi diagrams have equal power. And basically, the Voronoi diagram is a special case of that problem. So that problem can be uh, can be solved by our conceptualization. So basically, what how we can like a person moving between two noise sources hears only one, and more important, like if we have a self-guiding missile that can locate its target. So if at the army base we have to study which target it will uh, go and uh, hit, that 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 requires a uh, little bit uh, real understanding. Like which which target is more influential that the missile can uh, see, that kind of thing can be found with this problem. Basically, uh, what I was referring to is like this is these are two sides and this is more powerful. So the Voronoi line won't be this, which is the midpoint of both of them. But basically, this will be according to the power. So, will the fortune uh, fortune algorithm work for this? Actually, the answer is no. What happens? Uh, 
as we were uh, having the like it's a three prime and uh, this this thing expands so this is taken into consideration like this is equidistant from this point but what happens if we have a site here which is more powerful than this one so what will happen like since this side is more powerful so this 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 can't be a Voronoi line. Voronoi had to be some somewhere around this, since it is more powerful, and that thing can't be made by this. Then the conceptualization of the parabola will change, and in that case, Voron, uh, fortune algorithm will fail. But in a case, if we like, um, if we modify simply like uh, when we were pumping the air in the each soap bubble, and this pumping, if done in accordance with the sphere of influence, like one bubble is expanding more than the other then and the rest will proceed as normal then the Voronoi diagram will be as this uh, like that will solve our problem which like one one sphere of influence is more than the other now coming to the uh, soap bubble algorithm in detail we are using a CREW prime model which is basically a shared memory a concurrent read uh, exclusive write and parallel random access mo uh, machine model and we assign each process, uh, a processor to each side, increase the size of circle at each side, Voronoi line, uh, Voronoi lines will start at the midpoint of to each side. So basically, first question popped up, like uh, at what point will like each circle will uh, will meet and form, will form the like how we'll calculate that. So basically, that will happen straight at the midpoint. And the straight line we can find from the two points. We know this is the midpoint and this is the perpendicular bisector. So we have the line equation. That's, that, uh, that can be found in unit, uh, unit computation. Now these two points are used for the for uh, finding the Voronoi vertex. So basically what it says, each side stores with which side Voronoi lines has started. Like we have a circle, if it, it has started making line with three circles, it notes that information. And if, if a, circle is a cycle is made between more than three cycle, uh, circles, then we have a Voronoi vertex. These two points will be explained in this slide. Like, Initially, we have a scenario in which one was stretching the three, two was stretching uh, two was stretching three, and now two has touched one. So, what? So this information is in a, in in each side, basically with each processor. So, two will inform uh, two touches three, then two informs two to three to one. Then one will find out that it contains three in its list, which is this. So, it finds it has a cycle. So this cycle will form, like we have a cycle, and ultimately we know that it will result in a Voronoi vertex. So in this scenario, like we don't want to calculate for each point, and like in, in this way we are uh, uh, cutting down a calculation cost. So uh, in that scenario, we have the Voronoi vertex touch all the circles, uh, Voronoi vertex to touch all the circles, and we have a Voronoi vertex. Now it's the time for uh, complexity. The circle expansion will run up till each circle collides with the other. Basically, expansion of the circle is limited by the other circles. So, this expansion, uh, like, uh, so basically the expansion will go on up till the longest radius of in the Voronoi diagram. The circle having the longest radius will expand up till that we can't have the final Voronoi, uh, Voronoi diagram. So, the, basically the time, the worst case time would be the longest radius. But, to find the uh, longest radius is in itself not trivial. So what we did, we find the average time complexity of the whole scenario. We find the longest radius to be order of uh, AB by N, where AB is the dimension of the plane. How this thing came? Actually, on an average, if we see like to each side, how much area would be associated? That would be the uh, uh, that point uh, like the total area divided by the number of sides will give that figure. So if we consider the the normal area to be like uh, this x into one unit, a b by n. So that x, so one dimension, the maximum one dimension that it can go was a b by n. And we are interested in the longest radius, and the longest radius would be the diagonal of this one. So that would be x square plus one under root, and that would be of the order of a b by n. From there we got the AB by N thing. And so, 
we are using, uh, this is the time complexity and we are using n processors so the cost came out to be AB. So here's the catch. This AB is not a constant thing. We have not achieved something very new. Actually what happens, like the distribution of points is dependent upon this area. So in that case the cost will be order of n. Which is better than the sequential algorithm, I must say. We are getting the better, exist, uh, better than the existing parallel algorithms if the distribution is better than n log n is equal to k times a b, where k is a constant, and in that case the co uh, cost will, like in the uh, in, in the last uh, in this limiting case, the cost will come out to be n log n. So now to conclude our slides, we have like we studied the best sequential algorithm and the parallel algorithm. We conceptualize and analyze a new approach for solving the problem and our, uh, our approach can provide a solution to the other domains as well. So here, we, uh, here I conclude my, uh, our presentation. Thanks and any questions? I don't exactly understand how you say that the time complexity is order uh, longest radius. Like say processor 1 will not know anything about the other process, you know, the circuits of the other process. Yes. So you have to have some method getting information from the other circuit. Yes. And after that, it will take longer to get Actually, what will happen? Each circuit will, have you understood the point? Each circuit will expand, like, it's, it will always expand. Yeah. But the other circuits, on touching, will limit it from expanding. Yeah, right. Okay? Yeah. So it will expand only up till that point? Yeah. So the, It can't expand more than that. So the total number so of expansions will be order longer to get Yeah. Right. So as, but, as all the circuits have expanded, yeah. So all the circuits will expand, like the limiting case would be the longest radius. For all, the all the expansion. Yeah, but how will you find out which, which ones are touching and stuff, you know, like... No, uh, yeah, when, when they are touching, we are assuming that data set to be discussed earlier that... Uh, Actually, we, I try to make my slides a bit easier. If you, if you want to go into complexity, I can discuss. We, have, we are covering that in, uh, uh, in a report for, properly, yes. Basically, I have conceptualized like each each site will have a tri kind of structure. So that what it what he's telling that how did you get AB? By yes, basically he's he's asking like how we'll get the no, uh, like the points the intersection. What he's saying is okay, I understand order longest radius uh, because that will be the you know total expansion, for, mm -hmm. the maximum expansion. Mm -hmm. But after each you know say you increase by one unit mm -hmm. and then probably you'll have to see if something is touching. Yes, yes, and then you again increase by one unit. That's yes. what I feel. Yes. Yeah. So that. Checking should be done in constant time. Then only the time complexity can be order longest radius. If it, if it is not in constant time, you cannot say order longest radius. So I don't understand how you can do it in constant time because you have got say n process. So how will I know processor one is touching with what other process? You know that will depend on the number of yes. For that I think you missed somewhere. Yes. For that I discussed this thing, and for that like two circles touching that will be found by at the midpoint of two sides. So we don't have to search for each processor and find whichever thing. I'll initially I'll make the uh, like okay here's the thing. So actually what will happen? Each circle knows its side. Each uh, each processor knows its side. In the constant time it will go on. We have an array which has uh, which is of the length of the uh, x x uh, x axis of the whole thing. One minute. When you say each processor knows its side, what do you mean? Each, like each processor is associated with a site. See, a processor will get a find a processor will get a polygon, right? In the two dimension. No, initially, it's the first step. It's the first step of the algorithm. Okay. What each, each processor has, it has x and y axis of its site. Okay. Okay. So, it, each processor goes into the array. It's a shared memory. It goes and marks where its x axis is. Okay. We have an understanding of the distribution beforehand. We know what what can be the longest radius, <coughs> approximately, not okay. Okay. So this side will do. This is the longest radius. This is the longest radius. All the sides that will come in that domain will be put in a stack in a time stack of that side, which like if if you are coming through here, three is coming here. So this is a timeline kind of thing which is of the order of R, since we can proceed only R, okay? So at each expansion, this will move here, here, here. As we, it comes here, it knows it will touch 3. And similarly, 3 will know it will touch 1. 
So at that point, in a constant time, we'll get a line. Okay? Here. Now, each processor knows which side it has expanded. Each side will make a dry kind of structure, which is like, you must be knowing a dry. Yes. For the whole class. Like, what, what happens in a dry? Like, one side has a, this, uh, total n minus 1 branches. Okay? And only that side is uh, highlighted, or boolean or something, you can say that it touches this point. Okay. And this is like side 2. Side 2 will in itself have a try, try node. So, from here I'll know, 1 has touched 2, 1 has touched 3 or something else. Similarly, 2 will also have this kind of structure. So, as uh, in this example, what will happen? 1 touches 3. 1 touches 3. Okay? It has this highlighted, 2 is not highlighted here. Then 2 touches 3. Okay? Then what will happen? 2 will, uh, like on touching to 1, it will tell this 1 the trinode of its trinode, which is this 3. Okay? Talking about finding the common vertex. Yeah. That's okay. How that? Like, let me explain. Yeah. Let me explain. Then it will come, like this thing will come to 1. 1 will tell its third node, like the 3 node, like this is the, this is what I have got. Have you found the circle? So we will find, okay, I'm 3 and the 3 is highlighted in this node. So it will tell, okay, we have found a cycle. In that way, it will communicate to all the things we have found a circle. So this will be in constant time. So in this whole, like the whole thing can be found in constant time. 2 has to inform all the touching circles that it has touched in, right? Yeah. So the we have the shared memory. Time will be, uh, we have shared memory. Number of we have shared memory. Shared memory and randomly we can uh, uh, inform each processor. No, but in the worst case, you know, like... But I don't get it. If you are using shared memory, then each processor has to look for each processor in the shared memory. Like no, no, no. How? It knows only these. It has... How much? Okay, it? suppose two there is another ten circles, and uh, after that if there is three, mm -hmm. two already touches uh, ten circles already, mm -hmm. and after that it touches uh, the circle number three. Okay. Now it has to inform all the ten circles. All the ten circles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the all. You have to inform it, right? Of course. You are not using shared memory. So all the processes are not reading from the shared memory that exactly you want. But that will happen in communication. Will happen in constant time, regardless of the oh. amount of processor, regardless of the thing. It's a, like the, we are using the pram model. It's a parallel random access model. Yeah, but that the communication one can uh, communicate with two in random access, uh, random time. Random communication is there. Yeah, communication is in constant time, but the number of communication you are required to mm -hmm. is ten or two. Mm -hmm. the order will be number of circles you are touching. Okay. Not the cost. So initially, the whole thing was like for. The, this thing was made only because like it knows it will touch like the communication will have only in R uh, the, uh, like it will communicate only in number of R uh, number of it can't be more than R so what will whatever will yeah, happen you are expanding R you are expanding no, this is the maximum maximum, maximum things. Things. we are not going beyond this so whatever we'll do we ha we'll we'll resort to only our order R so this can be done in other way also Actually, we thought of it. How can that be? See, what I was thinking is that if you keep the several copies of it, that's why. Okay. Copies of what? Huh? Copies of your trial. Mm -hmm. For each person. For each person. If we, and then whatever he is, they are having the idea that how can you. So we'll try to consider that. That's beautiful. I think that can be avoided on those things. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll do that. Thanks a lot. Otherwise, uh, logically, I feel that it's okay. Right? Only thing of cycle found is the, you are, the problem is that cycle found is how you are fighting it. Because there are several, that, you know, at any instant, four cycle also can create at a particular instant. The four cycle, four also suppose, yes, sir. Uh, or that is a four circle also in physics. And it is, it is all simultaneously knocking to three. Mm -hmm. Let's check whether I have uh, then the what? Uh, you are only finding circle of three. No, no, no. 
that communication will happen in all of them. That communication will happen in all. Right. So that's why there is there may be three sides of the thing. Because it's a maintaining the event event stack for all of these. Uh, ah, those things, those things because it's communicating with all of them, not only three, not only like it will like whatever circles it's, it 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 connects to, it will inform so them. Those has to be saved actually. Critically, you have to. So actually, in the report, I have mentioned everything. Take it, take it. But here, I have because like nobody will understand that, so that that's why I didn't. No, this is like a complex statement you are making. Nobody will understand that the work for the city is good. Just keep on. Vishal from row number 290 and Solo from row number 270. See, the title itself, you know, you have given a very big title. If you have parallel algorithms in EVM, you have to implement all parallel algorithms. Now again, there exists a class of parallel algorithms. Maybe sorting, maybe subtracting, maybe something. Some parallel parallel. So, Kaiser's control is such a big thing. It was a very big thing you have mentioned. So, you must, or if you will have some non numerical algorithms, or some semi numerical, something like that. Actually, the algorithm is implemented from different classes. But class is more. Semi numerical, non numerical, or numerical. Not all, so some you are like. So it's some non-numerical algorithm, non-numerical parallel algorithm, right? Good morning everyone, this is Deepak and myself Mayan. We have implemented some of the algorithms that are covered in class and two extra which have not been covered in class. Start with the, first of all, this is the table of contents. First of all, we will give a brief overview of the PVM, the parallel version, the, some, some algorithms and the sorting algorithms. These were covered in the class and the transpose also. Then there are three over the finding square root and NQs and the grabbing search person. Now, uh, we would like to give PVM only first. Uh, <coughs> PVM enables a collection of heterogeneous computer systems to be viewed as a single parallel virtual machine. Uh, it means that uh, we can, uh, uh, the, the program that like programs on the PVM environment uh, need not to worry about the uh, architecture on which uh, he is programming or running the PVM. Uh, so, PVM transparently handles all these machine routing and data conversion and task security uh, across the network of incompatible computer architectures. This is the computation model that PVM uses. The input is partitioned based on the functioning of the task uh, or data partitioning uh, across a uh, number of uh, computers <coughs> available. Uh, and these computers perform their ta assigned tasks and uh, send the result to the a node, uh, which is, it is called the master, and the master node displays the output. Uh, these are some of the <coughs> PVM routines that uh, we use frequently in our programming. PVM IPID register the given task uh, and uh, uh, get the unique ID uh, in the PVM environment. Uh, PVM exit exits the task from the PVM. Uh, PVM uh, square creates n number of tasks. Uh, uh, that uh, mentioned in that variable and task uh, and it uh, creates uh, task uh, uh, task of uh, character pointer task. UM kill kills the task, UM parent gets the parent ID of the child, uh, parent. A child gets the parent, parent ID, UM uh, initialize the sending, UM send, uh, sends uh, to the destination with uh, given tag, UM receive, receives with the same tag, and PVM multi uh, multicast multicast uh, to the n task number of uh, tasks, uh, which are whose pair TIDs are given in this array, pointed by TIDs. Other than this, there are functions uh, to pack and unpack different types of different data types for integers, floats, doubles. You have all diff different functions for that, <coughs> and you also have a concept of group where you can assign a few tasks to, to a particular group, and then you can access them through a, through the group ID which is a sequential ID, starting the index starting from 0. Say that the IDs are unique, but they are not uh, necessarily in sequence. And we, uh, we are not sure about the first number. So we, if we assign them to a group, we know that the, the group IDs will start from 0 and go on till the number of so elements in the group. group contains three number of elements, <coughs> then it assigns uh, different IDs, 0 to 3 minus. And we can also so broadcast to a group, just give it by giving the name of the group. 
Okay, we started the sum algorithm. So this is the same as in covered as in co that was covered in class. We have n n elements and p processes. We divide the n elements into p groups such that the each the size of each group is n by p, and send them to dif to, to the different processes. Each processor adds it, its n by p numbers, then sends it back to the what happens is this you have uh, say uh, processor P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 and so on. So how what you do is P1 sends it to sends its task to P1, P3 to P2, P5 to P4 and so on. Then in the next next stage this sends it to P0 and this receives something from the next if there is some other, then in the next stage this sends it to so finally we get the result in the P0 processor which is actually the master processor and it displays the result over there. Are you using the master processor to spawn uh, the sum like a slave uh, method on all these or are you doing it like crowd computation? Master does work. No, I mean, I, so you are having a typical master to existing where, you, where the master spawns the slave. Master spawns the slave and it also computes, it also yeah, keeps some numbers for itself. It, it will also be a slave to itself. Then the sum on the linear error, what the difference between the two is that in PVM we can send the data, data directly from one processor to another if we know the ID of the processor to which we have to send. While in linear error we, we only have connections of this sort. So in this in the in this implementation what we do is when it follows the same logic, but when when this this data has to be sent to P0, it goes through first P3, P2, P1 and then reaches P0. How are you implementing the receive non Okay. So you count the number of receives each of these uh, you have and then you like <laughs> See, what happens is uh, this is first of all P0 will be receiving from 1. No, I'm saying are you counting it uh, somewhere and then doing it or? See, I, I just, I see this that P0 first receives from 1, P2 from 3, P4 from 5 and all odd, odd number yeah. process or have to send it only once, their own, their own data. So all odd numbers send it first, then you have only these, you have or only remaining with the even number process, which also then alternatingly will send their data to back to the previous process. So what uh, what I do is I maintain a variable and I just keep on multiplying it by two every time. So I know that from <coughs> what it has to receive and to which it has to send. Then 2D mesh is also similar, just use the in, in the in two two dimensions, the same process. We first collapse the columns and then the first row. Then we move on to sorting. The enumeration sorting has, in, uh, you give it n elements, so it uses n square process for sorting. What it does is, uh, it creates a mesh like um, structure, but the connections are in the row and column as in a, as in a tree. something of this sort and so uh, you have, you, you can send data from P0 to P1 and P2 from also to P3 and P6. So this way you can send this data. Uh, what this does it, we initially, we first of all give uh, the x, xi variables to the, uh, all of these x1, x2, x3 and similarly x1, x2 and x3. They store it in uh, two different variables a and b. Then the first row and the first column broadcast it broadcast the both the numbers to the, to, to the other elements in the, to the other process. Then all of them calculate the rank <coughs> depending on the values of A and B. Then the ranks are summed up in the first column. And then after we get the rank, we move <coughs> from uh, say the rank over here is mm. zero, so it moves from here to here to some place over here, then goes up and then reaches over there. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the same algorithm that we covered in class, so I'll just go through them fast enough. Then bitonic sorting, again we have a bitonic sequence, so you divide it into two different bitonic sequences, and then using bitonic merge, you merge the sequences and so on. You see. So the, this uses n log square in comparison with the n log square in process, 
and the time taken for this is order of log square n. So the overall cost is order n log to the power 4n. Same with the ordinal merge sorting. Uh, this also does uh, divide, it, it, it divides the sorting sorted sequence into two, se two different se sequences and then you, uh, you merge the sequences to form the, so this also take the same, same amount of process in the time. Then transpose of the matrix, uh, here the, we, the model we use is MCC. We initialize the matrix uh, of size n cross n and create n cross n tasks uh, on UM. So actually the number of process available that uh, we, are, we are available are less than the number of tasks we are creating. So one, uh, one processor gets more than one, one task. So we transfer uh, corresponding element to that processor and store that element in a register called A. And we perform uh, rotate of, uh, and after each perform, each processor will perform rotate, each task will perform rotate of operation uh, on, the, on the element that is stored in the register A. And this PBM barrier <coughs> will ensure that all <coughs> processors will, uh, will uh, say, uh, get synchronized over here. And after that, again, all processors will uh, perform rotate left on the element stored in the register B. If the row is equal to column, then we swap uh, the elements. And again, PVM barrier is used so that all processor gets synchronized again. And this will, uh, this loop will be continued n number of times. So after n number of iterations, we'll, each processor uh, will contain the element which is uh, the transpose element. So this, uh, so uh, at the end, each processor will uh, send the result to the master processor. Master processor will uh, just display the result. What is the input? Input is the matrix. Yeah. Where it is available? Uh, it's a, it's there in master uh, processor. Master, the, master uh, processor creates n cross n uh, number of slaves. No, no, no. <laughs> matrix is available where? Uh, at the master processor. But if you have the master processor, then why to do all those things? Mm -hmm. so you observe, if everything is available in the master mm -hmm. processor, yeah. And then the uh, master processor does himself the transform because the time needed, say, thousand cross thousand matrix, that uh, a thousand comma thousand, that data element you are sending to thousand element position. Yeah. Yes, you are saying that uh, the data uh, is available at each processor. So the time, it is, if I do it in the single processor, the time is order n square. Oh. And if I do it using parallel, it's order n. But uh, the data you have to send, right? Yes. From the master to thousand to okay, four thousand. Okay, basically, which is, uh, which is n square? That will then depend on the the. How are you going so to master will <coughs> broadcast the data? But okay, see, tell me the suppose eight data you have. Hmm. Now how is it broadcasting the data to all the? You write down in some place. The well, master will connect to all the slaves. Huh? So oh, it will in this. Achha, master is connected to all the slaves, yes, yes. but thousand comma thousand data he has to pump, right? So it's only so it's only one data time, right? Why? <coughs> because it is connected to all slaves and uh, sending it to one slave will take only constant time. So it will broadcast it. Uh, 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 broadcast means what? Tell me, the, you write down that there are n elements mm -hmm. and I uh, if element will go to the process of PI. How much time will need? Is it order n or not? Yeah. Order n. So order n square or not? In the matrix case. Mm -hmm. So if you are ready to spend only pumping the data order n square, basically that is that you do the transpose of the matrix and give it. So but if you have it in different processes, then that huh? reduces one of the steps from. Yeah, I mean that step, that initial step will be reduced. So, so, not initial, so, we assume that you assume that elements are lying in the master processor, hmm. your problem is no good. Right? Then, the data transfer, then you are making com unnecessary complex problems. Right? So, you have to assume that either a part of the, a block of the, a sub block of the matrix is residing in PI. You understand okay. that? Uh, so that otherwise, will not be there. otherwise you will not gain. Yeah. Otherwise you will not gain. In reality, so you have to remove the first. Yeah. yeah. The first. You assume that you assume that a block of a matrix is residing <coughs> in each process. Now you want to make the transfer. Yeah. Then how you got the sub block from some p crossing to some p crossing? 
Okay. I mean, it's a, the, the so broadcasting step that uh, they uh, do. Uh, can be otherwise, uh, time, uh, if you estimate the time, you find the time. The broadcasting step uh, can be interesting. Should not include in the. Oh, yeah, in the main algorithm. Uh, the next algorithm is the finding square root of a number using bijection method. Uh, here, uh, let x be the number whose uh, square root is to be found. And uh, in the initial case, we initialize the start and end with uh, 0 and x respectively. And uh, we uh, divide start to end interval into p equal intervals, where p is the number of process that we are available. And uh, we are storing it in an array. So we obtain a of x and a of x plus 1 such that f of a of x, x is less than 0 and uh, f of a of x plus 1 is greater than 0, rather than less than uh, and we find C such that uh, C is equal to A of X plus A of X plus 1 by 2 and we find F of C, we check the sign of F of C uh, and we compute start and then uh, appropriately using uh, signs of F of A of X and F of A of X plus 1 and we uh, again uh, assign start and end and we broadcast the start and end and this will be done uh, till we get uh, desired activities problem that uh, we have implemented is n place problem. Here the problem involves uh, placing n queens on n cross n change board such that no queen can attack any other queen. Uh, the, we have uh, tried to find all possible solutions and uh, the solution that we <coughs> calculated is by, by, uh, by backtracking method uh, and the complexity of backtracking rises exponentially as the size of n queens. Uh, here is the working of sequential algorithm uh, to find the position of the queen in kth column. Uh, we find it such so that it should not be attacked by any of the previous uh, k-1 queens which are already placed. So if it is not possible to find uh, such a position for kth column queen, then we backtrack and find the next same position for k-1 queen. So here is the uh, working, uh, here we place the first queen at first to first column. We try to place second queen so that it should not be attacked by first queen. Uh, the, the same position for the uh, second queen is third third row, uh, second column and similarly we proceed for the uh, third queen. Uh, so the same position for it is uh, fifth row, fifth row, third column. So yes. similarly we do for fourth and fifth queen. Uh, this one is the parallel algorithm. Uh, here we note that uh, uh, so all the solutions that we obtain by placing the queen at first row first column position, first row second column position and likewise first row n column position is independent of each other. So we can compute all these solutions <coughs> parallel. So initially we have n number of tasks, we call that as task. So at the initial uh, stage itself we have n tasks and we will gather the task till the number of tasks that, uh, uh, that we have reaches p. So that each processor will get one task and it will compute all possible solutions for of that task. So to gather a task, uh, 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 what do we do? The, we split the initial n task so that we get p number of tasks. So here uh, i level uh, is another variable that will come into picture. So, so, uh, so initially we have four number of tasks for this matrix. Uh, and, uh, suppose number of processes that we have are more than four, uh, then some of the processes may remain idle. So uh, for that case, we will compute the task, suppose this is the first uh, first queen, we compute the task for the second level also. So the, the next possible position for the second uh, level queens are this one. So these are, we gather three number of tasks. We do similarly <coughs> all these uh, three positions also. So likewise, we continue uh, till we get P number of tasks. This, uh, this number of levels, uh, that we are going to traverse depend upon the uh, size of uh, the number of process that are uh, available to us. So this task uh, is an array which will store all the tasks. And uh, this, uh, this uh, now our job is to only finalize this loop. Uh, so individual each processor will get one task and it will perform that task uh, and complete all possible solutions of that task. So this, uh, if you parallelize this loop and we, uh, we use this routine, uh, as a quiz, I level and task of x, then this processor will start with that level uh, and uh, this task of i as initial values and will calculate all solutions. Uh, the analysis of algorithm is like 
the, the complexity of sequential algorithm is uh, order of to the power of n. Uh, here the complexity of parallel algorithm is uh, uh, at, at state 1 we will be kind of computing uh, all possible tasks that are needed, that is p number of tasks. So at, uh, at the first level we have uh, n number of tasks. At each level, uh, as each sub subsequent level, the number of tasks uh, goes on increasing by order of n. Uh, and the, at each level, the number of processors that are available for the competition will be strictly greater than the number of tasks that we have gathered so far, up to that level. So we can split these tasks, uh, task of gathering the tasks uh, across all the processors that are available for that level. And uh, the time required for this uh, this particular step is equal to number of levels. And number of levels is a function of n and p. And uh, the value uh, of this number of levels that are uh, needed uh, to complete uh, to gather the task is uh, is found to be order of log p by log n, and the complexity of second uh, stage uh, will be reduced by factor of p because we are assigning uh, each task to each of the processor available, and there is no communication overhead. Uh, each processor will compute uh, all the solutions <coughs> that, that are possible for that uh, task. So total complexity becomes uh, to the power of n by p plus log p by log n. Uh, here uh, we can reduce the complexity of the problem. Uh, I mean complexity cannot be reduced, but uh, the execution time required can be reduced by exploiting the symmetry uh, of the problem. Uh, here a symmetry along the vertical axis is that uh, all solutions obtained by placing queen at first row first column and uh, all solutions obtained by placing the queen at this position and this position. And similarly for this position and this position. Are, uh, almost a mirror image of each other. So we can uh, avoid these, uh, these competitions. So half of the competitions uh, can be avoided. And similarly, uh, for the horizontal uh, axis symmetry, uh, all solutions obtained by placing the queen over here and over here uh, are exactly mirror image. So again, uh, the competition can be uh, avoided for uh, this. So here are the some of the special cases. Uh, when n is uh, uh, prime, the solution can be easily found by drawing straight line on n cross n finite plane. The solution equation for this is y is equal to a x plus b, where uh, a is not equal to 1. Uh, if we equal to that, then we will get uh, all pairs uh, plus diagonally. So for that case, uh, a is not equal to 1. And for n is equal to 7, if we put values of a, 4, 5, uh, and b is equal to 0 to 6, we will get all possible solutions. So that uh, execution time of this particular, all particular cases can be reduced. Uh, and uh, when when n is equal to uh, product of two composite uh, numbers, n is composite number, is product of p and q, then we can uh, directly compute the product of n queen and q queen <laughs> solutions, uh, and we will get the result for n, n queen problem. So uh, for example, uh, if n is equal to 35, and p and uh, uh, p is equal to 5 and q is equal to 7, then we can generate, uh, we will compute the solutions of p q in, we will compute the solutions for q q in, and we just uh, take the product of this, and the total number of solutions we will generate is of, of, uh, of this problem. Uh, so we executed uh, this uh, on PVM, and here are the results that we obtained. Uh, uh, as as uh, number of queens uh, increases, we can see that uh, the time required is uh, is going on increasing exponentially. If we add uh, few more pins uh, to, if we add few few more columns to it, uh, then we will get around uh, uh, time as uh, hours and days. <coughs> so these are the figures. Uh, the gain that we obtain um, is uh, almost linear for n is equal to 15. Uh, because the number of other factors uh, that came into picture are nullified and uh, the problem is effectively parallelized. So for n is equal to 15, as you can see for in the last column, uh, the gain is almost uh, linear. The next problem that we implemented is the traveling salesperson problem. Uh, the definition of problem is uh, that uh, for G, P, E, uh, P, A graph, uh, a tour of G is simple direct cycle that includes every vertex in P exactly once. And we want to find uh, two with minimum cost of traversal. 
uh, here in the sequential algorithm, we are uh, here we without <coughs> loss of generality, we are doing that our code starts at vertex <coughs> one and ends at uh, vertex one, and we find all permutation of the remaining n minus one vertices, uh, and we will find the permutation which will give minimum cost. Uh, so this permutation function we compute the permutation starting with i plus two. n minus two is the size of permutation. Initial cost uh, it starts with that cost. And permutation contains the uh, number of uh, elements whose permutation is to be taken. Mm -hmm. Here is the parallel algorithm. Now, in our tool, uh, first and last vertex is fixed, that is vertex one, and uh, uh, the remaining n minus vertex is we can uh, generate n minus one task. Uh, so, suppose we have four uh, four uh, vertices, then uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, let me the vertices. Then, then our uh, task we can gather is two, three, and four. So these uh, all permutations starting from two, three, four can be uh, calculated independently. So each processor will get uh, this task uh, and they will perform the permutations and will send the minimum value. Here uh, uh, we can't explore the symmetry because uh, we assume that this uh, graph is directed on. So time of execution on PVM. Uh, here uh, NC is the number of cities, N is the number of processors. Uh, when NC is equal to 14, uh, <coughs> you can see that uh, it's growing exponentially. Time required is uh, very much large. Uh, these, these figures uh, are uh, on VF PVM. Uh, this is the slide for uh, gain obtained. Uh, gain is the time for the sequential execution divided by time for the parallel execution. Uh, for n is equal to 2 uh, and n is equal to 14, uh, again it's almost a parallel, uh, I mean a linear gain that we obtain. Uh, here is the second algorithm for the traveling sets of the problem. Uh, in this, uh, in each iteration, uh, we explore the node uh, which, uh, which have the minimum cost path from the start node. Uh, Suppose uh, we have four nodes again. Then uh, from the first node, we can have uh, n minus one pass. So we explore this first node to n minus uh, one pass. Again, we will compute uh, the cost from one to two, one to three, one to four. Uh, and we will, in the next level, we will explore the node which has the minimum cost. So suppose three has the minimum cost, then we will explore only two, uh, three, and uh, we will get uh, Two and four. So again, in the third level, we will compare uh, all these costs and we will explore the next node. So this exploration of node can be executed <coughs> parallelly, but here there is a problem that uh, uh, the number of the nodes that you are exploring goes on decreasing uh, at each level. So some of the processor may uh, remain idle, and also the task that uh, each processor will get. Uh, uh, which uh, very small, uh, so communication overhead will dominate the uh, cost of that. The conclusion is implementation of parallel algorithm gives a good insight how parallel algorithm works. And there are a lot many <coughs> practical uh, like uh, number of processes available for the competition. And implementing any parallel algorithm is what we get since. So the demonstration right now and after this. So right now we will give a demo. One example you can show. Just, uh, this is the NQ integration. The number of screens I am entering is 30. <coughs> I had already added uh, the six processes to the TV for uh, the virtual machine. So, so this is the parallel uh, evolution time, please. We are not calculating the sequential we got on the screen. So the time required for the sequential resolution is uh, 17. What do you mean by number of possible solutions? Uh, number of solutions. Uh, so in yeah, the NQ problem, we can have uh, the NQ space on which we can explain it. So this is the number of different places that the queues can be used. Uh, but uh, what do you need to know? So that's how the, the problem is to find the position where you want to place the. Uh, so that you have to. You, your 
We have to print as of there, these are so many changes. So. No, no, you want one solution. Uh, no, our task is to find all possible solutions. That's what the algorithm that we implemented. So only one, uh, one solution. How do you know that they are correct? Huh? The solution is correct. Uh, solutions, the number of solutions are. Uh, yeah, we printed actually solutions, but uh, here we can't print 73. My question is simple. How do you know? Whatever solutions you have made, hmm. they are correct. Can you check it from the lower values of it, but not for the final list? Yeah, we can check it for the lower values. So, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8. No, but it is the same as by, by your user backtracking algorithm, right? Only that you are using the concept from mirror image and other things. Yeah. No, currently <coughs> we are executing that. We are dividing each task to be closer. We are gathering the number of tasks. And at the end, no? We are getting P number of tasks and we are distributing into the each question. And each question will complete that. Yeah, we have to justify why it is correct. Uh, which one? So this is not a such a new algorithm, but it's an existing algorithm. Yeah, the sequential algorithm that we are using is the same one. Mm -hmm. Only the, the step we added initial step, where we compute the task and we divide the task to each question is different. What do you write here in it to understand where I have to find out? You have to if you write any algorithm or any information, but you must see that this happens. Yeah, we check the kind of yes. How? We put it for the lower values of n and then we check the all possible solutions. So 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 into 2 is also 4. So instead of multiplication, you have given the plus sign, you got the together. So now 2 plus 3 plus 4 and 2 into 3 into 4 is going to be together, right? <coughs> <coughs> so smaller value is the one thing. So the algorithm is sequential algorithm the same thing. But uh, how you are, because you are using the mirror image concept to another thing. Mm. In sequential algorithm, the mirror image part is not there. Uh, sir, so actually the, the algorithm, algorithm that we implemented uh, is not exploiting the symmetry of the problem. Uh, the, we are gathering all the uh, tasks and we are finding all possible solutions. That means you are implementing the sequential algorithm directly. Uh, we are parallelizing with sequential algorithm, algorithm. Yeah. and we are implementing sequential algorithm. That is why the gain is only so the yeah, number of processes are uh, symmetry, uh, then the gain uh, also increases. Uh, so I have to see your paper. Okay, you show me one day all the implementation. Yeah. What day? Did you do it today? Yeah. After the exam. Yeah. 23. 23. 23 is okay. okay. 23, 4 k 5 k Hello everybody. Uh, we are presenting a parallel algorithm for case sorting. Uh, let me call the definition for uh, what, a, what a case sorted array is. A sequence P is called case sorted right? if for every element uh, P in P, position of P is at a distance bounded by K from the position of P in S, where S is a sorted sequence. It's like, so, in other words, the array is almost sorted. It's like it's not exactly sorted, but it's almost sorted. So in this IAP, which is case sorted, if the element is here, then the position in the sorted array cannot be at a distance distance uh, greater than or equal to k. So when you say the array is one sorted, it just means that the array is completely sorted. And uh, this this uh, case sorting is useful when you want to sort groups of elements in such a way that ordering within a group is immaterial. Well, like you just want to say that I I don't care about the ordering of the group and say the size of the group can be k. Then if you do k sorting, what you uh, get is what you need. Yeah, just one or two properties of the case sorted sequences. Uh, well, if B is a case sorted sequence, then uh, well we define two things. One is LB of B, which is nothing but larger before. The, and uh, when I say sorted sequence, I mean an ascending sequence, not a descending sequence. And the larger before of BI is nothing but set of all elements before that which are more than this element. So in other words, these elements have to be transferred here when you want to sort it. And similarly, smaller after is nothing but the set of smaller elements here. Exactly. And it can be easily seen that the number of elements here, that is the number of smaller elements here minus the number of larger elements here will be nothing but the position of this element in the final sorted array minus the position in this array. Because in the final sorted array, what you'll be doing, nothing but is just move these elements here and move these elements here, then you'll get the actual position. 
Now this is one property which Sorry, can be proved. Sorry, okay. one question. Uh, you are discussing this with uh, regarding to sorted position of the element or the non See, sorted? S of bi is the <coughs> position of the element in the sorted sequence. S is the sorted sequence. See, what is the position of this element in the sorted sequence? An easy way of saying this. Is this element is already in the sorted position or not? This no, element this element is not in the sorted position. This element is in position i uh -huh. in the array p, which is okay. So if you sort it, no, 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 no. go on. Yeah, okay. So and sequence b is case sorted, if and only if for all i we have this result that number of elements, you know, SA, the smaller elements after and the larger elements before, both are less than k. What is the range you are considering for after and before? All, everything. Here, here I am not mentioning that it is k sorted or anything. I am just saying that you know the number of elements here and here will determine the actual position. So we actually uh, designed a uh, parallel algorithm for case sorting based on the parallel algorithm for mesh sorting. So the principle will uh, carry on. Uh, actually what we are proposing is basically a parallel algorithm for case sorting problem. The model which we are using is basically the shared memory model with concurrent read and exclusive write access. The number of processors required in uh, our algorithm is basically order of n. The time of complexity comes out to be order of log k log n y k plus log square n y k. It's fairly good complexity and uh, the, uh, clearly the cost uh, is of order of n <coughs> log k log n y k plus n log square n y k. Uh, we can see that uh, from the, uh, the formula from the time that uh, if you go to k equals 2 and that is the uh, case of the sorting, uh, time complexity comes out to be order of log square n and the cost comes out to be a order of n log square, which is, which is the same as that we have obtained in the class using by, by doing sorting not network and hypercube model. Uh, before uh, describing the algorithm to Bajwan, uh, from our actual problem of case sorting, uh, we, uh, we will describe the algorithm that uh, we have designed for parallel mode sort, which we are using with some modification in the case sorting problem. Uh, so this is the merge step in the algorithm. Uh, A, the other two array of the same size n, and they are sorted actually. And the step one in the algorithm is we initialize an array position. What uh, for this array is this array basically at the end of the algorithm, the position array will determine the position of the uh, all the elements of array B in the final merge array. So suppose uh, if the uh, BI is at position J in the final merge array, so the position I will, the value of position I will be J at the end of the algorithm. Uh, we are initializing the, all the elements of position array as one. Uh, this step will be followed one. The next uh, step in the algorithm. It, uh, basically, we are performing uh, in this algorithm, uh, in this step, we are performing the binary search for all the elements of array B, all the BI elements of the array B on A, and storing that result in the uh, in the another array predecessor. So, it is, uh, actually, we are using the uh, concurrent read model, so all these binary search can do in parallel. Uh, after, after the end of this step, predecessor I will have the predecessor element of BI in, in array A. So, it's like every element in B will individually see its position in A and it will show that in predecessor. So this can be done in order logging time. Uh, because binary search takes order log, log, order logging time, so this step takes order logging time. Now, what our task is, uh, is basically we will find the position of uh, elements of both of array A and B in the final merge array. For that we will use the two array that we have defined as the position array and predecessor array. What we are doing in this step is basically we are performing the cumulative sum approach that we have discussed in the class with slight modification on the position array and with n processor and CIW model. Uh, actually, uh, we have broken the uh, we have break the every iteration of the cumulative sum approach in two steps. Uh, actually, what happened in the cumulative sum approach is basically suppose we have eight elements, a one, a two. <coughs> In the first step, we add these two and store the value in this. So this will have a1 plus a2. Similarly, we add these two. This will have a3 plus a4. In the next step, we are sending the data of uh, a1 plus a2 to these two processes. <coughs> Actually, we are doing this on the B array, not on the A array. Yeah. So this will have A1 plus A2 plus A3. And this will have A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4. So during the same step, we are sending this value to uh, these two uh, 
processor. So this will have the value as A5 plus A6 plus A7. And so on, we are adding all these elements here. The only difference here, uh, we are all, uh, the, so similarly we can find out the value the what is uh, going on in the ith iteration. Basically, we are sending the data of position j to the position j plus 1 to position j plus 2 is to per i minus 1 uh, elements. Uh, so we are performing this, uh, this in parallel. Till this point, this is the same algorithm. The only additional step what we are doing is basically we are checking whether the predecessor of j and predecessor of j plus 1 they are same or not. If they are same, then we are, we are adding 1 to all these elements. Actually, why we are doing this basically, predecessor of j is not equal to predecessor of j plus 1 means that the predecessor element of bj in array a and predecessor element of bj plus 1 in array a, they are not same. So, it is uh, like this, suppose this is bi, bj and this is bj plus 1. Predecessor of this will lie here and predecessor of this will lie here. So clearly this element will lie between these two elements. So we have to create a space for this element in the final verse here. That is why we are adding one to create the space. And finally yeah, the element yeah, yeah. is predecessor j, j plus 1. So uh, the, we can find out the, uh, the position of the predecessor j plus 1 in the final verse array. That position will be position of j plus 1. So similarly after the, all the steps we can find the position of all the elements of array in the final verse array. And also after the algorithm terminate, we also have the position array, which gives the position of all the elements of B in the final merge array. So we have the position of all the elements, so we can find the final merge array. Step 3, it will take order log n time because of the cumulative sum approach that we have taken with n processor. Total time complexity is the sum of the all three steps, which is order of log n, and cost is order of final log n. Next is the total number of merge steps required will be order of log n. So the time complexity of more parallel merge sort it comes out to be order of log square n and cost comes out to be n log square. I just want to emphasize this point here that while we are doing this in the B array, which is in B array, so we just need to see which element of A is there. Like you know, you can't just add the number of elements of B. Suppose that there is an element of B here. The position of this element in the final array does not uh, depend alone on the elements of B here. It also depends on the elements of B, elements of A which are smaller than this element. And they can be uh, easily found out, you know, by the cumulative sum by adding when the uh, adding one when the predecessors change. Yeah. And now we come to the case of the case sorting. As we saw, we got a log square and algorithm, uh, merge sort algorithm, and uh, basically. <coughs> The type of, uh, you know, for a given array, multiple case order arrays are possible. There, there, there is no unique uh, case order array. And the case, type of case order array, what we are getting is, you know, this is the array with n elements. Then what we say is, you know, uh, we have got n by k such segments. Each segment has n elements, uh, each segment has k elements. And uh, these k elements are smaller than all of these. And uh, like, they are they're basically divided into groups. So these will lie in between this and this and so on. This is the type of case sorting that we are trying to achieve. Uh, so here we have two case sort arrays. Okay, now I define the k-merge step. Actually, in the algorithm, initially we start with uh, n by k, so n is the uh, in, uh, input address size. So initially we start with n by k groups. We just get the n by k groups and we know, note that each one of these uh, segments is k-sorted in itself. And uh, now we apply the k merge step recursively on these, and finally we get the total uh, k sort array on the n. Now I, I describe the k merge step. So here a and b are two arrays of size uh, uh, m each, and uh, so these are the segments that are present, you know, m by k different kinds of segments, and within each segment uh, we store an array segmax. Which shows, which shows that, uh, nothing but the maximum element of all the segments. That is like uh, the maximum element in this segment and the maximum element in this segment. So there will be m by k elements in that segment, array. And uh, so this is the step one of our algorithm. In the step one what we do is we just do the binary search for these segments. You know, uh, what I mean by this boundary is the segments of this segment. So I do the binary search for these segments on A. 
this can be done in uh, I do it parallelly and this can be done in order log m by k time and then for, suppose for this particular segment I get the position as here you know and so it just means that all these elements have to lie here you know they cannot they cannot be here because this was what I thought was, was the maximum element of this particular segment so now what I do is I for all these k elements here I parallelly uh, get the positions here position in the sense the uh, amongst the groups so which group it belongs to so this also can be done in order uh, log m by k time now this this concludes the step one now in step two what I do is you know for every for every uh, boundary of a which has been chosen here like say this one uh, uh, select this boundary and this one select this boundary and so on something like that so for every such boundary a the k elements before that I do the binary search here and I get their positions amongst these uh, groups uh, I will explain why I have done that uh, this is because the elements here you know it may so happen suppose this is the boundary for this so this it just means that this boundary will lie somewhere here and there will be some elements before that and there will be some elements after that what I intend to do is I, I intend to merge these two uh, uh, groups and get 2m by k groups so for that I just you know get, uh, do the reverse binary search I say that reverse binary search and for these k elements in uh, order log m by k time again but how are you getting this log, log of m by k? because I am doing it only amongst the m by k um, you know segment headers so but uh, that can be bigger one see the element yeah the element of a if you do the binary search you may find that all the most of the time it is a boundary element uh, you are doing binary search on maximum element right? Yeah, so that means the maximum elements of the segment should be sorted the maximum elements of the segment should be sorted segment yeah. size is sorted yeah, the maximum elements are sorted because because we are doing because we are assuming that you know these two segments are uh, what, do you, sorted. what do you have initially? Initially, you have A and B both case sorted. Yeah. yeah. And uh, In initially A and B both case sorted of this form, the form that I explained there. You know, they have got K uh, different groups. So this group is less than all the groups. The second one is less than first and third. Uh, you know, so, on. so I will be doing the binary search only on M by K elements in the worst case. So it's law, order log M by K. I hope you have to uh, clear it. Okay. If it is m by k, then log m by k. Yeah. Yeah, now we get the intermediate k merge, k sorted merge array. What it means is like, I'll get the array c of size 2m, which has 2m by k headers. But the problem is, the uh, size of each segment need, uh, may not be k, you know, in the intermediate array. I'll make it to be k in the final array. So how I will get this intermediate uh, array is, what I will do is I just, so I have got the segments in A, I have got the segments in B. Now what I will do is, I will make the, I will do the cumulative sum for all these K elements. Cumulative sum in a sense, like I know the positions of these elements here, like if this element belongs to this segment or this segment or this segment or whatever it is. So what I will do is I will just do the cumulative sums. So for, for example for this element, when I do the cumulative sum, it determine what elements, you know, this element belongs to this segment, about this segment. So I will get what elements are there before that, which belong to the same segment. In other words, I will determine the position this element is going to be in this segment after the merging. In uh, uh, log, log k time, because I am doing the cumulative sums uh, on k, you know, here I got k, k, k and stuff. This is because, in the worst case, you know all these k elements will go to the same segment and you know these k elements they will be they will be lying from here to here because you know the, the boundary uh, the uh, place for this is this so it just means that these k elements can be here or can be here so the size of any uh, thing any segment in this k c sorted uh, in this c array is less than 2k so in order log k time I can determine the sum of all the elements in this segment, in this segment, in this segment parallelly. And then I'll transfer it to this uh, particular segment boundary. And then what I'll do is I've got different say, uh, segment boundaries here, two MBK segment boundaries. I'll <coughs> do the cumulative sums on the segment boundaries. So in other words, what I'll be finding out 
is that suppose I am at this segment boundary. It just means that how many elements are there before this segment boundary. So I will be getting that sum in this particular element in order log 2n by k which is order log n by k time because I have got n by k, sorry, 2n by k such k time. So once I get the cumulative sums, what I can do is, you know, what I want to do is actually get the new headers, new boundary uh, dividers such that these are the new uh, things. Such that each such thing is k. You know, the size of each such thing is k. So now I can easily, and these uh, boundary will be at the integral multiples of k because that's what I'm trying to achieve. So I can easily find out, you know, from this information, the positions of these uh, boundary uh, dividers. And in the worst case, there can be two boundary dividers, you know, within one particular segment of the intermediate array because the size is at max 2k, we have already seen that. And uh, we can determine their positions. Once we determine their positions, we can get the relative positions within the segment. And once we get the relative positions, we just need to say this is the particular thing. So this is one particular segment of the CRA. And uh, this is the new header that, that, is, that is lying in this particular uh, region. So, and say, I determine the pth smallest element in this range. This can be at max 2k. And this can be done in log k time. This was done in the class uh, using uh, 2, 2k process, the number of process here, line here. And uh, once you determine the uh, pth element here, I can, you know, for all these elements lying in between here and here, I can get their positions. You know, I can determine whether they are more than this or less than this. And that can be done in constant time. Say I have got an element here. So the problem will be, where will I transfer this element to? Because I am doing everything parallelly, I don't know exactly where this element will be going to. So I need to determine its final position. So how I do that in two steps, you know. In the step one, what I do is, whenever an element is more than this element, I just put a 1, otherwise I put a 0. So I will get a uh, array, binary array. And then I do the cumulative sum in order log k time. So the sum here, sum till here will just imply that you have got these many greater elements before this greater element. So it's like it, 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 it just determines the position of uh, the, this particular element. So that will be nothing but I will get the position here. And then the second step what I will do is I will uh, uh, interchange this process, put 1 for uh, smaller elements and 0 for greater elements and get the position of the smaller element. So in log k time, I can determine the positions, final position, and once I move them, I can determine the maximum in each new header by just finding the k uh, smallest element, k uh, first largest element or whatever, in uh, log k time. And uh, so the total time for all these process, steps in k merge is log k, order log k plus order log n by k, and uh, we are using n process anyway. And the number of k merge steps, if we are starting with arrays of size k, and we are doing the merging till we get array of size n, so it will be in order log n by k. And uh, so the time complexity is nothing but order log n by k into order log k plus order log n by k. What does log k, log k plus log n by k is equal to log n, right? Log k plus? Log n by k equal to log n. <coughs> is it log of n by k or log n by k? Oh yeah, log log n by k. Is it log n by k or log n by k? No, no, log n by k. Yeah, log n, log n. There is log n and no, log n log n by k. Yeah, log log n log n by k. I can't find any parallel algorithm which does the thing in log n time. This is the n log n cos parallel log n is solved. On CRCW, you can sort in log in time. Huh? CRCW? Ah, no. CRCW, I'm talking about CRCW. CRCW is also in time. Sir? Yeah. CRCW, you've got an N-log-in algorithm. N-log-in cost time. N-log-in cost time. Log in time. But log in time. 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 Yes, sir, it exists for log. Our processor, we can sort the items in log in. Log. That you assume. That you assume. 
No, but what is that kind of protein? This is a tree protein. Tree is in there. But a lot of bookkeeping is there. Yeah. See, time book is residual. But at the same time, we have increased the more bookkeeping. So, the evolution has become very complex. But man thought, I, I don't think you can do it better than Oxfair. This, if you use this marks, you can, there is also marks, sir, three marks. See, if you use this marks, you can do better than this. So there is another problem. If you assume, but only way that your time population is coming log in to log in, right? Log in to log in between. Log k into log a and log n to log n. So it will be log square n minus log n. Log n into log n by log square n minus log k log n. Log square n minus log n. Log square n log n. 